On the 16th of January, 1941, Ernst Glaser, the Jewish concertmaster of the Oslo Philharmonic, was scheduled to give a concerto in the Nazi-occupied city of Bergen, Norway. As a special treat to the Bergen audience, Glaser decided to bring with him a valuable instrument, a Guarnari del Gesù, equivalent to a Stradivarius. Uh, that's valuable on its own merits, but was especially a precious instrument because it had once been owned and played by the beloved 19th century Norwegian virtuoso, Ole Bull. The concert began, innocently enough, with a performance of Haydn's Military Symphony. About halfway through the first movement of the Haydn, a large group of teenage boys came into the concert hall and occupied some of the empty seats. In the dark, not all the concert goers could see exactly who it was, and so they thought, it's nice that these young people are finally starting to take an interest in classical music, even if they did arrive late. But those who were close enough to the boys to see their uniforms realized the more sinister truth. The boys were wearing the uniform of the National Youth, Norway's version of the Hitler Youth. And they had come to this concert expressly to stage a riot. The orchestra played all four movements of the Haydn Symphony, and then nothing happened. There was a long pause. Backstage, the conductor, Harold Haida, was being told by Nazi officials that Ernst Glaser must not be allowed to perform. Haida was instructed to cancel the rest of the concert immediately. He refused. He did, however, buy himself a little bit of time to postpone Glaser's performance uh, to later in the program. So he went back to the front of the stage and announced to the crowd a change in the program. The orchestra would now play Paul Grainer's orchestral suite, The Flute from Saint Souci, which came after Glass's concerto in the printed program. The orchestra played all four movements of the suite, and then there was another long pause. Haida could be seen pacing back and forth at the back of the orchestra, looking distraught. The musicians looked at him and each other in confusion. And finally, Haida resigned himself to the fact that he would simply be putting Glauser at too much of a risk if he allowed him to perform. So he went back to the front of the stage and announced that he was very sorry, but that the rest of the concert would have to be canceled. What the hell, cried one of the national youth from the balcony. They waited throughout two pieces for their ride to begin, and they were growing impatient. Why doesn't he come? Is it because Glauser is a Jew, shouted another of the national youth. And then all hell broke loose. The national youth started shouting, down with the Jews, down with the Jews. They distributed these flyers from the balcony that came floating down to the lower level of the concert hall, declaring Ole Bull's violin to be a national treasure and protesting the fact that this Jewish peddler was traveling to their city making money off of the national treasure and calling for an end to Glauser's performances right then and right there in Bergen. The lights came on and the audience was finally able to see the national youth in their uniforms. And in what I believe to be one of the most heroic moments in all of the history of music, the audience fought back. Fist fights broke out throughout the concert hall. There's a story of an elderly woman striking one of the Nazi hooligans over the head with the handle of her umbrella. A member of the violin section of the orchestra stood up, tore off his tuxedo jacket, and jumped into the bloody fracas to join the fight in defense of Glaser. Before things could get too far out of control, Harold Haida leapt back to the podium and instructed the orchestra, play the national anthem, damn it! <laughs> the orchestra rose and played the opening chords of Norway's national anthem. Now in Norway, as is true here in America, when one hears the national anthem, one is compelled to stop whatever they're doing and sing along. And Haida knew that to be true. And so while the national youth were standing there, frozen at attention, singing the national anthem, their right arms extended in the infamous Nazi salute, Haida made sure that Ernst Glaser and Ole Bull's violin were whisked to safety out the backstage door. 